said to the British government, as Indian freedom struggle had two main streams. One, the revolutionary movement, another movement led by Indian National Congress from 1885 onwards, which was constitutional movement, which was shaped by Mahatma Gandhi as a mass movement. Aurobindo was one of the founder of that revolutionary movement. These are glorious parts of our national history. Coming back from the past to the present, when the new constitution was adopted, many of the makers of the Indian constitutions had to deal with the persons belonging to the civil servants. Quite a few of them were punished by the officers of the Indian civil servant for law breaking because in those days judiciary and executive were together and the Indian civil servant officers were both collectors, district magistrates, com commissioners and also the district judges. But thanks to the farsightedness of our constitutional makers, they recognized the importance of having a stability in the administration in the form of the civil servants. They deliberately, if you go through the proceedings of the Constituent Assembly, you will find there was a debate whether the American spoil system should be introduced with the change of government. The key civil servants will be changed, but ultimately, with the intervention of another great leader of India, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Constituent Assembly adopted, no, there will be Indian civil servants. A very small comment was made by Sardar Patel that it is for the workman to use his tool. Only a bad workman quarrels with his tool. A good workman utilizes his tools. Civil servant is the tool at the hand, hand of the political executives. Therefore, it was easy for our political executives to convert that civil servant itself which was recruited during the British period, which are trained during the British period to engage themselves in the social transformation in independent India. I had the privilege as a minister in the early 70s to work with several ICS officers who were recruited, trained before independence. And from my personal experiences, I can tell you the quality, commitment, devotion to the public service were simply amazing. Shortly in your academy, we will get that training with the complexity of the administrations, with the inherent instability in the political executive in parliamentary system. Parliamentary system, it is expected at the interval of every five years. There will be change. And you shall have to adapt yourselves with the changed. And naturally, every political outfit has its own social, economic, philosophy, you will have to acquaint yourself with that. Once as a young man, I had the privilege of being shown in, in the Union Council of Ministers at a very young age. I asked one of the <coughs> senior secretaries, I was in finance ministry, and not many the finance minister, who is also a very senior cabinet minister, 
used to be and even today now they were very choosy of choosing their officers out of four secretaries in the ministry of finance three were ics officers and i asked one of them and still i remembered his response to my query in almost my naiveness i asked him mr secretary don't you feel embarrassed to get instructions from a young man who is much junior to you in age and have gone through your academic records which you have an excellent academic performance and when i compare it with my academic performance i do stand nowhere near your performance don't you feel embarrassed to take instructions from me he looked at me and said no mr minister i do not look at you when you give instructions i look at the millions of people of this great country whom you represent that is the essence of the democracy your job is expected to be the ideal administrators in your capacity to be in the high ups of the administrative rung to give the correct advice to the political executive you need not bother about whether it will please him or not you want to give the correct advice and you want to implement the order of the minister just by your own likings or dislikings but on record in file you must always be proved correct that is the spirit in which we carry on our administrative system where there is a change and continuity in the change i would not like to lengthen my observations because i know you have other engagements but today your job is not only to maintain law and order not only to collect revenue there was a time when the most important job at the district level officer was to collect revenue even when we began our first five year plan land revenue continued to be substantial source of revenue to the exchequer if i remember correctly it was more than 16% of the total revenue which used to come from land and today it is less than 2% because with the change in the economic scenario there has been substantial change in our economic profile of the country when chashanmukham chetty the first finance minister of india presented his first budget of independent india you surely know that country was partitioned on 15th august 1947 budget for year 47 48 was presented on the last working day of february by the then minister of finance in the interim government who happened to be the prime minister of pakistan liaquat ali khan after independence there was a strong desire of the members of parliament parliament was then called as central assembly and it has two parts of job one to draft the constitution and also to discharge the normal legislative business so the first budget was presented on 26 november 1947 and first indian finance minister was shanmukham chetty you will be amused to know the total budgetary transactions 
for 197 crores plus rupees. 116 crores, 100, I think it was uh, 297 crores or things like that. 106 crores were, no, 197 crores. 106 crores were the revenue expenditure. 91 crores is the military expenditure. Nowadays, when you look at the budget paper, you find plan, non-plan, capital expenditure, revenue expenditure. Those classifications were not there. It was very simple. On the revenue side, you had only three, two important taxes income tax and customs duty. First, India's budget projected an income tax of 116 crores of rupees. Customs duty of 50 crores of rupees. And the last budget, which the finance minister, P. Chidambaram has presented, revenue is more than 10 lakh crores of rupees. Total budgetary transactions, is more than 14 lakhs crores of rupees. We have moved from 197 crores to more than 14 lakh crores of rupees annual budgetary transactions. Deficit has also increased enormously. First budget it was 26 crores of rupees. And today it is more than 3 lakh crores of rupees. You have to administer both at the state level and at the union level. This financial management, administrative management, law and order, host of, I went through your curriculum, host of subjects are there. Before I conclude, I would like to suggest to you, please remember, you are the chosen few in a developing economy. Of course, you are chosen not by accident, not by providence, but by sheer merit and of your performance. But nonetheless, you are the chosen few on whom to reconstruct the country to contribute in the process of socio-economic transformation of this country, of the largest chunk of humanity, depend for the remaining three, three and a half decades. I wish you all success in your endeavor. Many of the civil servants have contributed substantially in our economic development. One of the outstanding finance ministers of India, C.D. Deshmukh, who presented six budgets from 1950 to 1956, who happened to be the first Indian governor of Reserve Bank of India, Sir Benegal Ramarao, another outstanding civil servants who served as the longest serving governor of Reserve Bank of India, framed the monetary policy. L.K. Jha, who in the early days of formation of GATT, represented India in 1948 in the conference of the International Organization which established GATT, later on which was converted into WTO in 1995-4, which I had the privilege of representing India as the minister. Therefore, many of the outstanding civil servants have contributed in the formulation of the policies, not only in its implementation and both for pre-independence India and independent India. And you have joined the queue of that long, glorious tradition. I wish you all success. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, 
the director lal bahadur shastri academy of administration shri padamvir singh madam roli singh officials and staff of the rashtrapati bhavan ladies and gentlemen a very good afternoon it's a moment of privilege for me to stand before this august gathering and convey my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to the honorable president for taking his precious time out for us i thank you very much sir so at the very outset today let me put it on record that today has been a dream come alive for most of us to be and have an audience with you sir so we are at the beginning of our professional lives and our journey starts now and having had this great opportunity to listen to the pearls of wisdom from you which you have gathered over decades and decades of excellence in public life with impeccable integrity and honesty it is a source of great inspiration for us sir it will be a beacon of light for us in these testing times for our country sir we are a batch of 168 probationers and in times to come will be holding almost a quarter of the districts in our country given this huge responsibility i on behalf of my entire batch sir assure you that we will strive to work hard for strengthening the fundamentals of our democracy to uphold our constitution in letter and spirit to strive for equality gender parity and excellent service delivery to the citizens of our country sir you have quoted our excellent founding fathers in civil service to us i assure you sir that we will make them our role models and make india an india of our dreams i on behalf of the batch assure you that we will work with personal and professional integrity to become agents of change to make india shine in the league of nations i thank you profusely once again sir thank you